that. That's not supposed to do that. Hey guys, and welcome to what is still known for now as Daily Driven. Uh, I'm definitely going to change the name up. Um, yes, yeah, so kind of big story, I guess. Uh, as you probably all have noticed, there's been a massive, you know, lack of videos the past pretty good while now. Uh, and that is 100% my fault. I, you know, I, I actually ended up going to college. Whenever I started the channel, I was in my, my senior year of high school. Um, and then I started, I started college and I didn't really make that public or anything. I didn't put it on anywhere. I just kind of started and kind of just left you guys high and dry. And again, I, I apologize for that. Um, but yeah, so I'm out of, I'm out of college now and I, yeah, I'm kind of out in the workforce area. I have a full-time job. Uh, I'm not going to school full time anymore, so yeah, I have a lot more time to you know dedicate to stuff like this, and I definitely want to get back into it. Honestly, it's just it was so much fun while we could do it. It just got to be too much, you know, trying to or not organize stuff, um, figure out you know who's going to be where, who's going to film, how we're going to do this, and that was all on a shoestring budget. You know, I didn't have the tripod was terrible. You guys probably saw the clip where it fell over. Um, that was terrible. The camera was terrible. Uh, pretty much the whole recording setup was awful. So now that I've had a little more, uh, you know, income and I can actually invest a little bit into this, uh, I definitely, I'm, I'm enjoying where it's going and I think you guys will too. Uh, we're about to, you know, kick the ball, get it all moving, uh, get the ball rolling. And uh, yeah, I'm pretty sure you guys will really, really enjoy some of the stuff that we got planned. Alrighty guys, I'm just going to stop talking because you're not here to see me. Well, maybe you are. I don't know. Appreciate it. But no, we're here to see the car, right? So this is a 1992 Toyota Celica GTS. It is a five-speed manual, and it has a 2.2-liter four-cylinder engine, uh, making about 130-ish, when it was new, 130-ish, 135 horsepower. Um, this is the 5 SFE engine, uh, which is well known for their reliability. Um, it's overall a great engine. It's the same one they had in the uh, the Camrys of this era. Um, they're just overall great, great engines. Uh, they're not overly powerful, but they're kind of torquey for what they are. Uh, and it definitely provides a good driving experience. So I found this on Facebook Marketplace. It was listed for $1,200, I believe. And uh, I messaged the guy and I was like, well, you know, what, what's the lowest to take for it? I, 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 uh, I kind of want to know before coming all the way over there. And he was like, you know what, if you come get it, I'll take 900 for it. And then I was like, okay, that seems reasonable. Um, and then when we got there, we looked it over and kind of saw that it was, you know, in disarray, I guess. Uh, so I offered him, initially, he said he would take 800 uh, once I got there and saw and kind of pointed out some flaws and whatnot. Um, and then I kind of drove it and the clutch didn't feel all that great. It felt kind of, you know, loose and stuff. Of course, the car has a lot of miles on it. It has 360,000 miles on that, on the original engine and transmission, which is just mind-blowing. Um, but yeah, so it, it uh, the clutch kind of felt a little weird, and I was like, well, I don't know. It might be the way that it's supposed to feel. It might not be. Uh, and I told the guy, I was like, hey, would you knock off, you know, 100 bucks for the clutch uh, just in case? And then he was like, well, no, I'll tell you what, I, I, I can do 50. And I was like, okay, so we ended up at 750. And then, of course, I didn't bring enough change, so that was my my bad. Uh, I ended up digging some dollar bills out of my center console, and uh, we got up to seven hundred forty-two dollars. And then he was like, "That's good enough." So <laughs> here it is, seven hundred forty-two dollar car. Um, yeah, it definitely has some issues, but uh, we'll go over it, you know, section by section. Then we'll go take it for a drive, and we can see exactly what we bought. Um, but yeah, this really just goes to show with, you know, inflation as crazy as it is and everything. Is it really still viable to buy these cars for like sub a thousand dollars? And if they're, are they any good or are they just all trashed? So like I said, we're definitely going to get into it. Um, as you can probably tell, it's, uh, it's got some issues. Um, paint being the main thing at the moment. Uh, it is completely destroyed. Honestly, it's not worth saving. Uh, and this is after a wax job. So you can imagine how bad it was before. Um, yeah, not great, but the only feature that matters, 
Oh yeah, pop-up headlights, still fully functioning. That's gotta be worth something, right? But yeah, so it's a 1992. It is a Celica GTS model. So that means that the GTSs were only available in the, the hatch configuration. How some of the others had, there was a uh, Celica convertible and a Celica coupe. Uh, but the GTS itself was only available in the hatch. Uh, it was also a little bit wider than the GT and the ST. All right, guys, so this is our 1992 Celica's beating heart right here. It is a Toyota 5SFE 2.2 liter four cylinder engine. This is fuel injection. Um, there's the intake manifold there with the proud 2200 uh, logo there. Um, yeah, these are extremely stout motors. They, they're they not too powerful, about 100, 135 horsepower, somewhere around there. Um, they're kind of torquey for what they are. I believe it's around 145 foot pounds, something like that. So it definitely makes for a fun driving experience, even though it's not quick by any standards. Uh, it's definitely fun. So every label everywhere is basically gone on here. So there's no real way to tell if any kind of maintenance was done or anything. Uh, I asked the guy, I was like, has it had a time belt change? And he was like, yeah, of course. And then I got there and then I was like, so do you have any records for that time belt change? And he was like, oh no, it's never had one, but the guy was really easy on it. Yeah, it has 360,000 miles on it. <laughs> yeah. Um, but honestly, it still runs surprisingly. I'm not entirely sure how or why, but it does. Uh, now everything around the engine is kind of deteriorating. So this is, uh, that's not supposed to do that. Um, I believe yeah, that's, that's not factory. But now guys, in all honesty, it's not actually that bad. It's pretty solid down here. Um, it definitely has its issues, but I fully intend on pulling this motor out when it blows and putting a different one in. Um, you know, maybe get some ideas on what you guys think we should do there. Probably just going to do a direct replacement just because it's the easiest. And I, I like the motor, honestly, just riding around in it. It's a, it's a good motor. I, I definitely think it could be here to stay. So maybe down the line somewhere, turbo setup, possibly, but that, you know, that's, that's big future talk. Uh, I think first, first thing it's probably get the body looking a little bit better because like I said, it does run and drive. It doesn't really have too many like immediate issues that need to be dealt with. Um, if you might've noticed, uh, it actually has new spark plug wires on it. These are the cheapest wires that I could possibly find except for in a junkyard, um, five SFE wires. And I actually ordered the wrong kit. I believe this is for like a RAV4 or something. Um, and yeah, so it actually came with an extra one that goes uh, from the coil to the distributor, which I didn't end up using because this distributor is a little bit different. Uh, so yeah, I just have an extra blue cable laying around now, so that's cool. But it's okay, I didn't pay very much for them. I believe shipped and everything, it was like under 20 bucks. So honestly, can't complain. And they do the job, I, I know they definitely look atrocious. Um, but hey, it, it, it works, I mean, I can't complain. Uh, the only other thing I've done is oil change, uh, I've cleaned up the spark plugs a little bit, and the um, the ECT sensor on it was bad. So whenever I got the car, it actually had a dying problem. So it would die at idle, at like red lights and stuff like that. So my first kind of thing, I did some research and I found, hey, ECT sensor, that's the uh, engine coolant temperature sensor. Uh, sometimes it gives false readings and it can kind of stall out the engine if it's, you know, going bad or something like that. Um, so I actually went to the junkyard. Pulled one out of a car over there, promptly broke it, didn't realize it until I got home, plugged it in, thought it may still be working, and it, it wouldn't even start. It was that bad. It, it I don't know what I did to it, but it died. <laughs> so I ordered one on Amazon. I know it's not like OE equipment or whatever, but this car is way too far gone to matter. And it works. The $8 ECT sensor fixed most of the dying issues. It still had like a little bit of a stutter, and it kind of still does. I'll definitely show you guys. Um, but the wires kind of corrected that for the most part. It's just, you know, very, very random times it'll have this strange stutter and I'm not really sure what's up with it but eh. another couple interesting facts that I see in here that kind of lead me a little bit you know kind of kind of suspicious I guess so we have a uh, Freon or a uh, air conditioning service label that wasn't filled out we have an alternator sticker that is opted out 
Uh, another one that has, you know, decided that he doesn't want to be part of existence anymore. Um, let's see. Oh, look at that, guys. I never even looked. It actually has a timing belt replacement. And it's only 200,000 miles ago. This is, this is loose. That's loose. That went somewhere. Um, that's broken. This is not connected. Uh, these wires thought maybe whenever I bought the car, it's like really crudely ran to a fuse, which doesn't thrill me. Um, when I first bought the car, I thought it was like a subsystem or something that was ran on this awful wire. But no, it's the second cigarette lighter port. Yep. Don't know why. But honestly, guys, as much as I'm hating on it, it's really not that bad up here for what it is. It's a running and driving car for sub $1,000 these days is pretty great. So yeah, not much more to see up here. I'll definitely give you guys a quick, you can see there, 2200. Factory air intake. Jasper remanufactured battery, let's go. Uh, we have exhaust manifold, sad alternator, sad rubber hoses, oil leaks. Oh, my personal favorite. I saw this whenever I was test driving it and I didn't say anything, but it's actually amazing. An amazing feat of redneck engineering is, let me see where it is, right here. So, you guys will probably appreciate this. This is the Toyota factory igniter plugged into the Toyota factory uh, plug, right? Except there's a branch. There's a little stick. It's because that clip broke. So they've, they've, they've solved it by shoving a stick in here. And then I'm wondering why it has intermittent misfire. <laughs> I wonder if my stick is not performing optimally. Alrighty guys, moving along to the inside of the car. Uh, yeah, quite a lot of stuff to talk about in here. So this is, like I said, one of the highest trim packages that you can get as far as options uh, for 92. It does have the better stereo system, so it's got two tweeters as well as speakers down here actually in the dash. Then it's got two more in the back, in the passenger seating area, uh, in behind here, in the little, right underneath the quarter windows. Um, this also has a light that doesn't work, along with another light that doesn't work. Uh, it also has courtesy lamps. In 92, this would have been pretty well specced out, but today it's really, well it's not. But, nevertheless, it's actually not that bad in here. We do have fog lights up here. We have closing and opening vents. Yay. We have headlight stock here, blinkers. We have steering wheel. We do have cruise control. Does it work? No. Uh, we have rear wiper and front wiper, as well as respective like sprays for each. Um, research is right here. It's all very driver centric you can tell that it's like they wanted you to feel almost like like it was a cockpit or something um and then it's got three gauges up here three circles uh or i guess it's like the tri-circle gauges we do have power locks and power windows we do have power mirrors we do have an airbag on the driver's side passenger side does not get an airbag it was not uh they, the laws were kind of sketch at this point uh in time and they were kind of like they weren't mandated but they were so the driver's side gets an airbag, passenger side does not. Um, we have some very, very sketchy cup holders um, that I don't think would hold quite pretty much anything uh, without breaking. Um, that's quality. Uh, and then we have ashtray here full of various nuts and screws that I'm just now realizing may go to the car, as well as some change. Um, so that's something. We have not one, but two cigarette lighters because previous owners. Uh, and as you might have guessed, yes, surprisingly, it has been smoked in. Uh, it's not too bad, honestly. They, they kept the windows rolled down a lot because AC does not work. Um, so it didn't actually get, it's not too bad. But I do like having the, the little uh, air freshener in here. It does, it does help out quite a lot. Um, moving on. This doesn't have like keyless entry or anything, it's just old school key. I'm thinking about putting in some keyless entry similar to what I did with the, the Ranger. Um, kind of adding in a little bit and then being able to 
bring it more into the 21st century along with a new radio because although this is better than stock it's not because I have to use this contraption which 3.5 oh well let's go down there I guess it goes 3.5 to USB type C um, so it's not ideal but I mean it works for what I want to do it does have a sunroof but it is not the newer glass style it is actually a piece of I guess car I don't I don't know entirely what it is so yeah um, moving along we do get uh, a fair amount of documentation with this car which I'm extremely excited about we do have original 1992 Celica's manual so that was cool it you know has all kinds of manually stuff um, I do have previous owners registration I'm not going to show that I also have a 92 Toyota owner's guide I'm not entirely sure if this came with the car or if this was added later I mean it's obviously not a Celica but I couldn't tell you if I'm being honest uh, it was revised 1191 so I, I don't know if this came with the car or not it's got various different ones inside here I, I looked through it um, so it might have came with it or it might have just been thrown in here at some point in time um, honestly couldn't tell you so that's something worth mentioning we also have what I'm most excited about the original receipt for the car this is actually the receipt from Toyota when it was sent to the dealership um, the dealership in question is La Ritchie uh, Toyota slash Subaru so I guess they had like a, uh, a one of those dual dealerships so it was a Toyota and Subaru dealership um, the car is in super red obviously it's not so super anymore it's barely even red but it nevertheless it was once super red it is also confirmed here that it is the GTS um, we do have a bunch of optional equipment we also actually have something called the extra value package apparently uh, what it is is it includes power windows door locks air conditioner anti-lock brakes sunroof cruise control and floor mats someone has stolen the floor mats but we have everything else here um, that was a $3,600 upgrade, but it was actually marked down half price when they bought the car, I guess. I don't know. Um, also, whoever bought this car paid $446 for a compact disc deck for you to rip it out and put your $10 Pioneer in. Uh, anyway, moving on. That's about all for documentation. But yeah, uh, in here, sitting, it's actually not bad. Like... It is not comfortable, but it's really, really not bad. It is fine. I mean, I have plenty of room. I can, you know, I can shift fine. I mean, it's clutch, gas, brake. You know, I mean, it's 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 nice. On like, it's it's really, really reasonable for the the size of the car on the exterior and just in general. It's really, really impressive. Seats are still in pretty decent shape, especially this passenger one. Um, like I said, they're comfortable. They have a fair amount of bolstering for what they are. Uh, back seat is existent, to put it nicely. Um, I don't want to ride back there, so I, that, you know, tells you anything. It's definitely a compact car, for sure. So, you know, it'll be a squeeze to get adults back there. Maybe a little bit better for kids. I don't think so, because when I'm in my normal driving position, which is the seat all the way back, I have about that much room behind me for somebody's legs, so not ideal. A lot of people, and including myself, I, up until this point I've never owned a car with pop-up headlights, so I was really, really excited to figure out how they worked and was able to, that was one of my first questions I had for the guy, I was like, hey, does pop-up headlights still work? He was like, yeah. So that was one of my favorite features, um, as it should be, obviously, I mean, priorities, guys. So where uh, the actual pop-up headlights are concerned, you don't actually have like a pop-up switch or anything. It's all integrated with the headlight switch itself. <clears throat> so to get it, to get them popped up, you would just turn your headlights on like you normally do. They come up, right? And then if you ever want to ride with the, uh, the headlights up but not on, you can just turn it back to the first little setting here. It's the little circle. And if you turn it there, all the lights are off but the headlights are still open. So I guess you can kind of just, you know, decide what you prefer. Um, but that is how you do that. So you can actually, you know, drive it around or you can just park it or whatever. The car, the car isn't running and the headlights still are working. So you can, it's just like 
regular headlights in an older car whenever you, you can turn them on and off without the key even being in the ignition. Um, but yeah, so you can, you can drive around with them, you know, open, but not on. And then if you want to turn them, like close them, you would just go from this little circle or to off. And then that shuts them. So that's basically it there. Uh, definitely a really neat feature. I've always wanted a car with pop-up headlights. So that's definitely well welcomed. Alrighty guys, so I guess now that's basically all in here. We're going to go and move to the back, the uh, hatch. This is also my first hatchback, so that'll be... Uh, it, it's really interesting. I haven't had much to use it for yet, but it's cool. I, I'm definitely glad I have it, and it'll be interesting to get some use out of it. Uh, just pop it like you would a trunk. It's a little heavy, but the shocks are still in decent shape, so that's good. It also has this little privacy screen that uh, is, is kind of broken. Um... And it kind of just keeps anybody from looking in to see what you have back here. So let me just go ahead and pull you guys in for a little better shot. So I just have some random junk back here now. You can kind of see what you're looking at. I mean, it's in really good shape for what it is. I pulled this all out whenever I first got it. There's no rust or anything underneath it. So really happy about that. This is a fairly rust-free car, honestly. There's like, it's really clean underneath. All right, guys, so I'll let y'all know how I like it as time goes on, but right now I'm definitely digging the hatchback. It's, it's really cool. All righty, guys, so now we're going to go ahead and take it for a drive uh, and see how she goes. So yeah, I mean, it definitely rides like a compact car. It's not, and of course, you know, it is when it was new. It was a little bit on the sportier end. So it's definitely a little more jerky and stuff that I'm used to, but I mean, it ain't bad. It's fun too. Uh, and the five speed manual really, really makes this car. Honestly, I would care significantly less about it if it was an automatic. <laughs> Honestly, though, like for $742 is what I ended up giving for this thing. It's unbelievable. I was so surprised to be able to find like a decent deal with inflation and crap as it is. I mean, where I am, gas is nearly $5 and everything is crazy. So to be able to find a running and driving car for that kind of money is just insane to me. It's awesome. This is a 90s Japanese car. And, like, to see one going for, like, this little money at this time is just awesome to me. So, I am super stoked to have it, guys. I have a lot more planned for it. We're about to take it out here on the, uh, the highway. And then I'll let you uh, kind of feel the speed a little bit. I'll kind of narrate along and see how she goes. All right, here we go. Okay. 25. 40. Fifty. Fifty-five. Sixty. And like I said, guys, it's not it's not some kind of speed demon or anything. Um and of course, I'm not going to beat the crap out of the car, uh, you know, Florida or anything, whenever it has 360,000 miles on it. I'm definitely going to be babying it until I can figure out another motor situation. You know, I was a little hesitant at the beginning, seeing how little I paid for it with uh, everything going on. But I think it just shows that good deals are still out there. I mean, of course, they're a lot, you know, more sparse than they used to be. But I mean, it's really not bad. And it's like... I don't know, I, I just, it makes me want to look for more because to see this kind of car going for this kind of money this day and age is just unbelievable. So I guess the moral of the story is, is yes, this car is definitely worth $742. And, you know, I think that everybody should go out there and like, these deals are out there. Of course, they're going to be hard to find, but they're out there <laughs> evidently. So... 
you know, I, I am super, super happy. And I'm happy to be back doing videos because it's been so long and I'm just, you know, I'm pumped for it. I'm ready. I still want to find a new name for the channel, guys. I, I kind of over daily driven. I, it's definitely overused in my opinion. So I want to, I want to get something a little bit different, a little more unique to me that kind of highlights me and my channel. So yeah, guys, I am, but this car is awesome. And I think it just goes to show that these deals are out there, you know, uh, yeah, it's just awesome. <laughs> Best way to put it. Well, guys, uh, I think that about wraps it up. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, if you don't mind, please hit that like and the subscribe button. It really, really helps me out. Um, like I said, I know, I, I know I've been gone for a while. I'm definitely trying to get back into it. Um, and hopefully as time progresses, we can get even more and more, uh, you know, cars and, uh, maybe even possibly some guest hosts or, you know, some, some guys that want to come on with me and we can do kind of like a, uh, like a group kind of thing. I don't know. We'll, we'll see how it goes. But so far guys, just know I am going to be back. I am going to be, I'm sticking with it. Uh, now I have a lot more free time. So I am super stoked to be back and super stoked about this car. It is, it truly is a diamond in the rough, I think, because it is fun. Alrighty, guys. Well, thank you so much for watching. I definitely appreciate it. Uh, like I said, hit that like and subscribe button if you don't mind. Um, and I'll catch you guys in the next one.